Hi, I'm Robert Borton, CEO of Classical Conversations, the world's largest classical Christian homeschooling community. I'm launching a new podcast, Refining Rhetoric. If you like cross politics or just listen to hear what crazy stuff they're saying today, you will enjoy Refining Rhetoric. You can find us on your favorite podcast platform. I practice the 15 tools of learning by interviewing great guests, looking at current events, and talking about cryptocurrency. This is the wrong music. Mm-mm. Now, what I, I chose this. I chose, uh. It's the Boniface option. Uh. It's Christian nationalism. Mm. Uh oh. Yes. Knox. Jesus is Lord Come over back. all. Come back. Sam Come on Knox. now. Come back. You see what he's doing to Yes. Me? I should have had a whole stream of. <laughs> no. Lines. No, I, sh- I should drop lines. I got to drop bombs. I can drop them moms. You know what I'm saying? Uh. You don't know. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to Cross Politics. Knox isn't here. So you had to um, deal with that. Um, uh, I'm, Pastor Toby. I'm not dealing. Chalks is still not here. And, and Chalks. Chalk Knox. Chalks. 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 That's my, that's my new nickname for Knox. Chalks. Chalks. Yeah. And we got Pastor Andrew Isker, In author the- of The Boniface Option. Thank you for actually coming to the studio from, from Minnesota, from Wasika. 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 Yeah. Wasika. Th- thank you, Toby. Yeah. 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 Wasika. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's, yeah, it's an honor to be here yeah. in, in your presence. This and, is and, and for those who don't know, I, I dropped my friendship with Andrew. Um, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was eight years ago now because mm-hmm. I actually asked Andrew. He's one of my first buddies. I called say, hey, I want to start a podcast on this. And, wait, and, wait, wait, wait. And, so, and he was... He was living in Minnesota at the time. Missouri, yeah. It was in Missouri. Yeah, I, I, yeah. They're the same thing to me. Yeah. Missouri and Minnesota. <laughs> Maybe this is Texas. Not, not, Texas. Yeah. not, not Texas. Texas. Not Texas. Not Texas. <laughs> so, so you're saying that you asked Andrew to be part of your podcast before you asked me. Well, because uh, me and him actually were at Great Fires Hall yeah. at the same time. I was at Great Fires Hall. And so we were, but you had you had left and then come back. And so like our, our friendship just wasn't the same after you, that. You were Toby. teaching. You were Yeah, you were you were like yeah. way better I, than me. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I, I, I I didn't know this. I, I didn't, you just you waited till just now just, just, yeah. just on the air. Drop this, this bomb is, on me like <laughs> like I feel You like, gotta process some things now. I do, I do. I don't know if I can handle this. I, uh, <laughs> but but back then uh, I mean, Andrew, we talked for a couple times about it, and uh, I think we just kind of realized, like, we don't know technology, and we don't know how this is going to work. Yeah. And this is, you yeah, know. So then you asked me. Yeah. yeah. Then I was like, hey, yeah. Toby's local. Who knows yeah. nothing about <laughs> <laughs> He's a sucker. <laughs> Hey, I want to let you all know about Ooh. Idaho Family Policy Center. IFPC is currently the only explicitly Christian policy organization in Idaho politics. Yeah. Uh, Toby, Needed. Toby Sumter and Israel Waitman serve on the board. Yeah, like <laughs> both those guys are really great. Yeah. Um, although who Gabe, wrote this ad? Gabe didn't ask one of those guys first to be on cross politics. <laughs> no, but Blaine Cosnati asked me first, and I said you should get Toby on your board. Man, you just totally. <laughs> That's just, also a true story. <laughs> It's also a true story that you just completely screwed up his last name, but that's fine. Uh, the president, Blaine Kanzati, uh, member of that's our true. sister CREC Church, King's Sorry, Congregation Blaine. down in Meridian. Uh, Blaine and IFPC have been leading the efforts to defund Planned Parenthood in Idaho, end abortion in Idaho, mm-hmm. protect children from transgender uh, nastiness in Idaho. Basically, Blaine is a very strategic voice in Idaho politics, and represents many of our biblical and constitutional concerns in Boise. IFPC really is a pretty brand new ministry and as such is still in significant need of donations to help fund it. Yeah. Um, we all have many commitments to other good ministries, but if you are particularly concerned about Idaho politics mm. and why wouldn't you be, this is one way you can. So have, goes uh, Idaho, so goes America. That's right. Very direct impact <laughs> on the world. I mean, it's like it's Idaho, international, America, yeah. and the world. No, hundred percent. So go to IdahoFamily.org, IdahoFamily.org, and learn uh, more about how you can uh, make a donation and yeah. and support Idaho Family Policy Center. Um, as Gabe already mentioned, uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Isker is pastor of Fourth Street, yes, Evangelical Church in Wasika. Is Minnesota. it on Fourth Street? It is. Okay, there you go. 605 4th Street, yeah. I, I'm, really? just le- I'm just letting everybody, the audience know how like I can make these connections. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Andrew, obviously it was a good decision not to do a podcast. <laughs> this game. Um, Andrew's a graduate of Minnesota State University, Mankato, and Greyfriars Hall Ministerial Training School in Moscow, Idaho. In fact, I guess you were one of my students. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Um, you you, uh, you took it was it it was my preaching class. You took it was. Yeah, it's, still, it's it's why I'm so good now. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. 
I've noticed. Yeah, uh, Gabe, ne- Gabe never took my preaching class. That's, no, uh, uh, no. Nope. Uh, uh, you were there a year after me. I was there because yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you you weren't there yeah, yet. Yeah. And when Andrew came, hey, you came. Hey, so stop pointing fingers. I'm man. just. <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling very threatened I right am, now. Right? You didn't even ask me first. Um, he served churches in Missouri, West Virginia, and now in Minnesota. He's actually preaching at his home church. Yeah, which is pretty cool. You were just telling us about it before we began, and yeah. um, so that's 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 in fantastic. Wasika. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, and he's also the author of Christian Nationalism, uh, joint authored with Andrew Torba, and uh, now your latest book, The Boniface Option. So, um, thanks. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there. So, yeah, you know, thanks, thanks for coming on, yeah, man. Thanks for coming. Really on. appreciate oh, it. Thank you for yeah. having um, me. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a reason why Knox is not here. He did not want to. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah I, I am too, honestly. Yeah. But um, anyways, so the first question I want to ask you is basically, um, Andrew, why are you so mean? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, true. you're clearly a very angry young man. I am yeah. so angry. And there's yeah. like, I mean, there's like <laughs> steam coming out of your ears right this minute. I mean, you came in the room throwing things. Yeah. Uh. Um, cussing at me. Cursing. Yeah. I mean, let I me mean, just look at you. I mean, yeah. obviously you're mad about something. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are That's you something? <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything. It's just something. I mean, is I'm it, mad. Is I it, am so yeah. mad at something right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, why are you so mad? Um. Well, yeah, uh, I'm not. That's not uh, a loaded question. Yeah, at exactly. All. Yeah, 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 right. exactly. Where do we go with that? Yeah. Um, when are you going to stop beating your wife? Yeah, yeah that's right. exactly. That's the question. Let's right. get into more. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like. <laughs> uh, but you're right though. Like it's it. Um, I, you know, you're referring to uh, Rod Rear's uh, yeah. uh, review of the book, which was great. I'm so glad he he did it. Yeah. Because uh, did it help? It did. Way to yeah. go. Yeah. Way to go, Rod. Thank you. Yeah. 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 yeah it did Rod doesn't text me anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. He did for a little bit, and then. Yeah. After his divorce, he was done. Yeah, yeah. it's it's sad. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I, I think um, a lot of it, you know, is the way I write. I mean, I, I write you know, maybe in a in a sort of caustic way. Yeah, uh, from time to time, and and uh, and it, it it maybe shows up in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> maybe uh, it maybe shows up. But uh, <laughs> but I, most of it, I'm 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 I write the way I do and the, the and speak the way I do. Um, and there's a, there's a, a joy and a, and a humor to it. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I thought the book was funny. <laughs> like everybody that likes the book is like, this was hilarious. So I like these lines are great. That's funny. And, uh, and so, I mean, I guess if you, I, I look at it <clears throat> like Rod is sort of in love with, with trash world. Like he likes to take pictures with oysters and, uh-huh. and what do you mean trash world? Food. So yeah, the book, um, you know, I talk about, um, really the entire, you know, modern, you know, a, a way of life, not just American, but predominantly American, this, this way of life that is, um, hyper individualistic, mm-hmm. consumeristic, where your, your existence, right. You're here, you're here on earth to consume product, yeah. right? That's, that's why you're here to. And that's your the, definition of kind of trash world, like in kind yeah, of consumer yeah. driven um, individualism. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's. I mean, it's a sort of uh, nihilism and and a sort of hedonism. Although it's not, yeah. Like if you talk to like an actual hedonist, like an ancient Greek hedonist, they would be like, "These people are stupid." Yeah, they're lost. Uh, like yeah. they're, right. <laughs> they're not real hedonists. Like we have fun. Uh, it, it's it's super lame. It's like uh-huh. your life is, um, you know, living in a in a tiny little apartment, getting Uber Eats every day, and and watching Netflix and porn. Uh-huh. Right? That's 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 the you know raison d'etre of your existence is to is to enjoy those things and can't wait till the next marvel movie comes out like that kind of thing right Right. and 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 so you're saying that rod kind of participates in that or at least on twitter the way he kind of you know more high class way yeah yeah yeah, yeah, okay yeah like instead of you know instead of uber eats mcdonald's you know he's having oysters oyster eats and french food i can't you know pronounce yeah Uh, and so that never um, fills you up well yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, some, of it, some of it is really good. When yeah, Francis eats Fukushan cooks say, for me, do not, I eat let, it. do not say that to the Fukushans. Yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> I love Francis Fukushan's yeah, food. I'm yeah. not knocking I'm him at all. I'm just saying, yeah. like, be careful. Yeah. Like, I still want to be able to get invited to some of his dinners. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, we still you, want him cooking for the elder meeting, yeah. you know, the annual uh, be careful. <laughs> so careful. retreat. Be careful. Yeah. yeah. But that, that, that it's, it's, it's sort of that thing where it is where, um, you know, historic ways of life, um, you know, family, all the things that, that, that root a life historically for all, all people everywhere, you know, you have your family and your, your community and your, your nation, things like this, um, all that stripped away mm-hmm. and, and gone. And all you have left are just random individuals who their identity is in the product they consume. Yeah. 
or on their um, Twitter handle or Instagram page, whatever. Yeah. Well, what, what do you, what do you, you in on. your book you talk? Hold, you you want to get? You want to get? Okay. Hold on. Hold right. on. There's two of us here. We're gonna do the interview. <laughs> That's cool. You, well, you uh, asked the first question. I think, I, I think I'm gonna run this now because okay. you asked him first, anyways. And <laughs> <Okay>. so, um, <laughs> uh, no. So. Um, it, that's sort of like mainstream trash world. Mm-hmm. It, ha, has the church bought into trash world? Are, uh, are Christians participating in trash world? Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think I think a lot of it. Like you look at at how a consumer driven you know mainstream evangelicalism is right. That it is. Um, you look at it like a big big box evangelical church, for instance, and it, it isn't just them. So I don't want to only pick on them, but yeah. the. It's like you like have a marketing plan. Evangelical and, churches in Wasika. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm gonna, you're gonna get me in trouble locally. Yeah. But, uh, um, <laughs> but like you have a marketing plan. You have it's it's you're you're selling a product. You're selling a religious experience, right. and you want to have a nice band and a yep. nice show, and the the sermons need to be totally inoffensive, and like the less Bible you have in the sermon, the better. Ooh, yeah. like, things like yeah. that. Sure, that's what drives so much of it. You see it all over the country, yeah. right? And and because what it is is like people are just picking. A religious product they're not yeah. they're not you know stepping into a, a you know millennia old tradition of mm-hmm. of doctrine and theology and you know all the things the that rich, the rich history there yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's like oh i like the i like the band you know like that that's the thing that drives a lot right. of evangelicalism i mean you is the product not the yeah like the seeker sensitive yeah. movement was yeah. that and and all of those things and it and it's a mode of of that same kind of society where you just pick whatever you want to be. You pick whatever things you like, and it's all consumer preference. It's like, it's all individualized. Yeah. So. Um. Go ahead. Oh, uh, so kind of off Gabe, this. You, you have this. You, you, have, may, you may ask a question. Thank you, man. <laughs> you have this chapter in your book called "Economic Emasculation." Yeah. Um, and then later on, you have a chapter in your book on economic masculinity. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. Tie that into kind of this consumerism that you're talking about. What, 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 well, yeah. first, what's your definition of ec- economic ma- emasculation? Yeah, so I, I think um, a, a lot of it is our our way of life in the last, you know, especially the last hundred years is is radically different than most. Just in the economic sphere, radically different than most of human history or all of human history, really, where the the household was the the main. Thing, yeah. Right, and the the father would and, and obviously you know mothers would would work and do you know you'd have like like America here in Idaho or, or in Minnesota, people came and settled the place and had farms, worked the and, land, yeah. and and it wasn't like mom was sitting in there you know uh, doing Wordle on her iPhone all day and <laughs> and watching you know Instagram stories like yeah. she was she was working hard too like it, yeah. the the household was an economic um, engine mm-hmm. right. Um, and that that's the way it always was. I mean, in Europe with the peasantry, it was that way. I mean, all, all, all the way through human history. And then in the modern age, you know, you have, you, I mean, some of it is just the process of industrialization where now um, productivity is not tied to what a human being can like pick up and move and, and human strength. Uh-huh. Um, and so now it's just your brain doing stuff. Like you can, you can fill out like a man and a woman can fill out a spreadsheet just as, as well as uh-huh. each other. And, and so you have the entrance of, of, of women into the marketplace in a different way Yeah, and it disrupts the household. I mean, some of, some of it is the kind of stuff like, like Chris Wiley, you know, writes mm-hmm. about in his books, um, that the household is no longer an institution anymore. It's right. now you have two, you know, economic producers that maybe are tied together in a, you know, easily dissolvable through contract. a bank account. Or yeah, something. yeah, and, that, and that's it. Yeah, so right. there isn't really marriage. There yeah. isn't really a household. There isn't, um, <clears throat> there isn't any of that. There isn't a, a father who is the provider for his household. It's it's you know dual incomes everywhere, and and that that works in like an economic sense. Like you'll produce a lot of stuff, but you won't have a mom rearing children. She'll outsource that to other people. She'll send the kids off to daycare and then to public school, and you'll you'll make like the GDP will go up. It'll be yeah. good for the economy. So like, I, I think back to like, there's that. And we, we sparred on Twitter uh, about this, uh, about the Ben Shapiro and Tucker Carlson uh, debate that they had. You oh, probably yeah. forgot. Hey, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, dude, I forget. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. Truck, yeah. 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 I, I don't remember. You, you forgot so, because I got the better of them. This, this is why, this is, <laughs> but this is why I'm like, he does that with all of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. When we win the argument, he's like, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> but this is why I'm friends with so many people because I forgot what I said to them. I was like, oh, I said that to you. I still mean it, Yeah, but I like you. But yeah, Tucker is, you know, Tucker's making this argument that like you need to have, um, 
you need to have stability over generations in a society. That's right. That, that the works. AI truck driver yeah, tweet. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. now. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'm sympathetic to Tucker, even though yeah. like, you know, the libertarian impulse I have is that, look, the market is good and we should have free markets and things like yeah. this. And, and Shapiro is this, is this like absolutist, like whatever is good for GDP, that's great. Yeah. Well, there could be things that are bad for GDP or good for GDP yeah. that are bad sociologically, bad for your, the health of your society. So how do you, how do you parse this? So like I am for one, a, I celebrate like modern technology. Oh yeah. So, so the fact that I don't have to use my body to produce, yeah. you know, my livelihood all day long yeah. is a no. massive post-millennial gift. Absolutely. Um, I, I do chop my own firewood and I do yeah. heat my house with wood because I want to. But yeah. the rounds yeah. got delivered to him. I mean, come That's on That's true. <laughs> today, if, you, if, you had, <laughs> if you're living in Moscow today, like it's a necessity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The gas doesn't work. Right now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our whole town's frozen right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but help parse this out because yeah. obviously, yeah, I, I, the household, household is the building block of society yeah. and um, there has been a modernist um, like full court press assault mm -hmm. on the household. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think modern technology has been weaponized yeah. um, to yeah. assist with that and then um, demand uh, the breakdown of marriage and the breakdown yeah. of family. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean then, you know, we should just, you know, do horse drawn. Buggies yeah, it, is an, it isn't a license to Ludditism. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's more so. The Lud uh, Ludditism. Yeah, is that what I heard? The, yeah, yeah. The Luddite, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah the people that no were modern against, technology, no yeah. machines. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh -huh. Right. It's, it's, it's more so like recognizing there's a, a responsibility that comes with the power, you know, the spider, the Spider-Man thing, right? Like you have this great power of, of technology that now you have human productivity that yeah. is, um, like if you, if you went back 500 years and told them like the wealth that we can produce, yeah. like it, you, they, they would think you're crazy. Right. Right. And so, um, so there, there's this massive power that comes with technological advancement, but, um, a lot of people look at it as, at it as a, like a morally and socially neutral thing where it's like, well, it's, it's, it's a good so there aren't any like strings attached to it. There aren't any things we have to think through sociologically. Right. Um, and there aren't any problems that could, could ensue from it. And, and so I, I, I'm more so saying we need to think about that stuff sure. in, in the midst of recognizing the blessing of these things. But it's the responsibility of like individual fathers, for example, yeah. to decide like, we'll use this technology, not that technology. Um, well, even, even beyond that, I mean, yeah, there, there, there are some things like that where like there's, there's all sorts of like, like not letting your kids have social media, things like that. You know, sure. like, yeah, we're not going to use that technology because right. it's not going to be good for you. Um, but he, he, so there, there's a, an individual responsibility as well. But I think you have, I mean, you have problems of, of the commons, right? And this is where like some of the like libertarian theory, you know, bumps into uh, realities that are not, not so comfortable where, you know, if you have a commons, right. Um, what happens in, in, you know, naturally like if you have a, a whole bunch of woods that nobody owns and there it's a free for all for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is it gets clear cut and everyone takes all the wood and, and nothing grows back and, or whatever. And no one takes care of it. Right. Right. Whereas if you have private property, it's, it's maintained and owned right. and things like that. But it, and so technology is sort of like a, a, a problem of the commons where, right. I mean, it's similar to like in the old Testament, the, the Sabbath law, right. I mean, you know, Moses had the guy stoned because he was collecting wood on the, on the Sabbath. And, and the re the reason why, and, and, you know, modern people look at that and they're horrified. Like they would execute someone over breaking the Sabbath. That's barbaric. Right. And it's like, well, no, you have to honor the Sabbath because if you let that guy get away with doing that, what's going to happen is everybody is going to start. Cause if, if I don't do it, I mean, it's like, it's like having businesses closed on Sunday, you know, today, I mean, a common, you know, a uh, question within like the whole Christian nationalism thing is mm -hmm. like, well, if you let this store be open on Sunday, then I have to be open too. Right. And that, so you solve, you collectively solve that problem by saying, no, we're going to be closed on Sunday. So some of it, you, you might have to have uh, someone solve you know, a collective solution to the problem of the commons where it's like, well, no moms, moms should stay home <laughs> and, and take care of their children and not you know, send them to daycare, not, not do this. How does AI um, play into this collection of the commons? Um, I mean, I think it's just another, it's another technology that multiplies uh, human labor. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, a lot of people are, uh, they think like, oh, it's going to be like Terminator and judgment right. and things like that. I, I think, no, it's, it's something that is, is useful. Like I'm not, 
like a lot, a lot of our guys are, are freaked out. They think, oh, it's a demon in the computer that's, right. yeah. that's running things. So right. It's like, no, I, I think it is. Um, um, it's a technology that that um, actually levels things a lot. Like I, I even think about in terms of like culture and uh, cultural creativity and and uh, the barrier to access. Like even even something like this show, right? Um, Thirty years ago, you know, n- none of us could do stuff like this. No. Right, you would. The only people that could do it are the people that have massive resources and cameras and studios. The gatekeepers, and, largely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so now you can have a show like Cross Politic and, and 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 many others where the barrier to entry is much lower. And so I, I think about it in terms of like um, making you know feature films and things like that. Like you could make a Hollywood blockbuster movie um, in you know very very nearly in the future for like fifty thousand dollars. Well, it's right. it, and AI is getting crazy. Yeah, in oh, the yeah. movie. Yeah clip cutting world and what it can do. Oh, right. the memes, I mean, uh, the, right. the meme ability is, is, yes. <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah. 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 So my, this all comes back to memes for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Um, I was, I was thinking as you're talking that, you know, with, with, you know, great power comes responsibility. Maybe yeah. the next book could be the Spider-Man option. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you should think about I'll it. I'll keep that on the short list. That's uh, funny. Um, so I think the thing about the, the Tucker Shapiro discussion that um, that bugged me was I'm so I'm not a liter- I'm not a libertarian. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't think that the answer then is to give certain authority to the government. The government. Yeah. Because yeah. like, yeah, yeah. I, cause I yeah. believe that God has established other governments. There's oh, yeah, church sure. government and family government mm-hmm. um, uh, among other institutions like schools and businesses mm-hmm. and so on um, that that when they exercise their authority and power faithfully in obedience to God's word, there's a there's a checks and balances mm-hmm. that works itself mm-hmm. out. Um, the guy that goes in and clear cuts the common land mm-hmm. um, is not going to get invites to next year's, you know, town party. Um, it, he might also get some dirty looks at church. And mm-hmm. if he's being, a, a, you know, really bad, maybe there's a church discipline going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, it's, yeah. And, and so not everything has to come down to fines and prison time oh, yeah, yeah. and the sword. Yeah. Um, and I think that was the thing with, with Tucker. He was just like, this should be illegal. This should yeah, be illegal. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was, and, and I think that's, that's the thing that bothers me is that yeah. I, um, in our eagerness to recover, uh, a Christian public square, mm-hmm. count me in, I'm all yeah, in. Yeah. Um, it, we, we can't, we don't want to just, um, re, you know, take the control room that yeah. the liberals have been building yeah. the, yeah. the, the, um, uh, the leftists and the progressive uh-huh. have been building uh-huh. for the last right. two centuries and say, now we got it. Yeah. Now we're going to tell you what to do exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. saying, no, 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 we we've got to remodel this whole control center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are there, is there some overlap where God's still given authority and, and, mm-hmm. and power? Yes. And we should use that mm-hmm. cheerfully, gladly and with justice, but there's a whole bunch of it that needs to get, com- I mean, speaking of Boniface, yeah. I mean, there's it's a big, torn down. there's a big yeah. chunk of it. That's got to get torn out. Yeah, just chop it all down. Um, yeah. And pieces of it maybe belong to families. Oh no, I know. And I, pieces I of it, you yeah. know, belong yeah. to other governments. Yeah. yeah I, I think so. I think some of it, um, I mean, yeah, I can, I can see, you know, Tucker saying that it gives, it gives me pause too. Like, I don't know what I think about that necessarily, right. but it's, it's part of it too, though, is I think about it. You have an entire society where, you know, the people that are more or less, you know, good and, and more or less on our side um, still have the perspective of, of Shapiro where uh, these things are an unqualified good. We can't question them. Technological progress is, is always good. And so if you have a society like that, where everybody thinks that way, um, that you know, the, the Tucker, you know, no, we'll just ban it, uh, might be your only option. It's, it's a, a lot of these things, a lot of these questions, um, are picking between, uh, multiple bad options, right? Yeah, like you right. Have, like, I, I get the, the yeah. ideal situation where you have a, a um, a, a very, you know, homogenous high trust society where, right. If one guy does this thing. And it's it's not good for your people together. Well, then he could be shunned, and 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 he'll he'll face social repercussions and things like that. But that assumes that you have you have that right? right. So if you don't have that, and everybody thinks no, the GDP must go up no matter what, um, then uh, you you might have to you might have to exercise political authority to do it. Is it? I guess even on that question, like it seems to me that the even that notion of GDP must go up. Is like that only works in a tiny, like short term thinking way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like we're yeah. in the middle yeah. of driving off of a, our GDP off the cliff. Yeah. Yeah. Like we don't have, yeah. and it's directly tied to the destruction of 
yeah. the American family. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you know, we sent our wives to work. We didn't have any kids. If we had one, you know, yeah. may, you know, we aborted most of them. Mm -hmm. Then we sent mm -hmm. the one we had off to daycare and he's yeah. a, a single, you know, yeah. Got ahead and, and, yeah, his, yeah, and, his, yeah, and his grandma's yeah. basement playing video games yeah, yeah, and yeah, watching yeah. porn now. Yeah. And we have this massive like population like hole. Yeah. And, and so like th if it makes the GDP, it's like, it, all you have to do is wait another, like a generation. And yeah. I mean, I know that's hard work for a lot of people to have yeah. that kind of patience and, and so on through that. Yeah, but, yeah. but it seems to me that like it, it, it didn't actually grow the GDP. It, it, well, it gave you a GDP buzz. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, no, I agree. Um, but it is, it is very short term thinking. It, it's very much like, um, you know, John Maynard Keynes, like the, the famous quote when he's, when people are, are objecting to his economic system and like, well, in the long run, we're all dead. Right. So the future doesn't matter. Right. Right. And of course, yeah. like, I mean, I, I talk about this kind of mindset in, in the book, uh, when I, you know, I use, this is probably what, what made uh, Roger or so upset. I use the, you know, the internet phrase fake and gay. And I, I explain that that isn't just like a slur. It isn't just, um, you know, a, a yeah. sophomore thing. It's that, right. The, the homosexual, like his, his entire mode of being is there, there's no future. He's not going to have children. Right. right? He has to like eat buddy, buy some, buy some children from somebody. Right. Right. Um, if he wants them. And so there's, there's no future. There's no productivity long-term it's living entirely for today. Your, your entirely high time preference. It's right now. Mm -hmm. And that that's, they want everyone to be, you know, of, of that mindset of consume, consume, consume for tomorrow we die. Yeah. Right. And, and so, yeah, it is, it is this short little fix where, yeah, the, the GDP goes up and it's, and it's great. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't last over generations right. and you, you are, I mean, you're, you're consuming all the equity that has been built up over um, hundreds of years or yeah. millennia uh, for this short term fix. I mean, it's like someone like betting uh, the value of his house on a football game, right? You know, you might, you might, you might win a lot of money. You're going to lose it though. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and so like, that's, that's more so what it's like. And, and, and so I think a, a lot of it is that is, yeah, there, there is um, this mindset and it's, and it, and it gets masqueraded as, as sort of like a, a libertarianism, libertarian, you know, purism yeah. where it's like, Oh, the market is sovereign and whatever yeah. the market wants, that's what we'll do. Yeah. Well, I mean, the market wants, um, you know, your, your wife not to take care of the kids and work because that's, that's good right. for the economy. Right? Right. There's more productivity. There's one more job, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I guess I just, I, on, on that, I know what you're saying. And I guess I, I still want to like push back and say, and just say, but it's not really. Oh, I agree. It, it's good. Yeah. It's good for the orgasm. Yeah. In the, in the in, in brief like, moment. Yeah. 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 But yeah. But I think there's also a sense in which we all, as Christians, we want to keep we want to keep the, we want to hold the dictionary. Yeah. It's not actually yeah. good for the market. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. It's suicidal. Yeah. yeah. And I like the, and I, I think you're absolutely right. It, it's a, it's a politics of sodomy. Yeah. Um, Ooh, and this yeah. is, this, yeah. this is Rush yeah. Dooney. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wrote a book actually called yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and the uh, politics of, of pornography. Yeah. And it's, it's living in the moment and it's, it's suicidal. Right. It's destructive. But that's the thing is, is it like, yeah, maybe gives you the a, a momentary market mm -hmm. orgasm. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, but that's but it's it's suicidal and destructive. It's not no. actually good for the market. What's good for the market is for men to get married, have a pile of kids, that's be right. faithful yeah. to their wives, yeah. build businesses and schools. Yeah, but the the people that are in charge, yeah, they're like, well, I'm going to be dead in 20 years, so it doesn't matter, right? You know, and so right. we'll we'll live on the high for yeah. now, and yeah. and my grandkids will have to worry about that. Right. So, so let's add just a, actually a little context here. People are probably wondering why are we talking economics and family and AI and all this yeah. stuff. What, what was the point of um, writing the Boniface option? Um, yeah, I think, I think the point of it is, I mean, even, even, you know, to talk like current events, um, uh, to take it back to that, I guess I can. Whoa, use the whoa, analogy. whoa, yeah. whoa. Yeah, this is cross politics. We don't talk about current events. But I, I think like, the gospel doesn't apply. Like you, you see the like the pro life movement and and how like especially like pro life Inc. and how pathetic it is, and and um you see like the results in Ohio yeah. on Tuesday, yeah. and and so much of the pro life movement, so much of of you know conservative evangelicalism that that means well and 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 is pursuing you know things you know, pro life agenda is good yeah. right, but. Beneath that is is an entire world that is is completely decayed and rotten right. that, that that requires the sacrifice of of millions of children to function. Right. And and so I, I look at you know, I'm I'm looking at that world, right, that's right behind um you know abortion. Um 
and seeing most evangelicals and, and most Christians do not uh, are not aware of it right. at all. They just think we could keep trash world. If we just stop killing babies, then we could keep everything the way it is. Uh-huh. And it's like, no, the, the, the rot goes so much deeper than that. And, yeah. and you're not going to be able to just have one simple legislative trick to end that. It's every, all of this, like I, I, in, in the book, I, I basically say, and I think I, I originally wrote it before the Dobbs decision where I'm like, if, if abortion was outlawed in America, like, like totally, like if, if um, Dobbs decision happens and then Congress passes a law to completely yeah. outlaw. It, right. Right. Uh, the American economy would collapse, right? It, it, it just would um, because all, all sorts of women would leave the, the, the marketplace and have to raise children. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, you see this with like the military, you know, the woke military saying, no, we need to have abortion in, in, in the military because we need all Keep the women, women in there. Yeah. 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 It's like, like they get it. Like the entire, all the entire society has to, it needs is, it. Is now right? being built on this kind of facade. Yeah. 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 And and so a lot of the book is is trying to delve into just how bad things actually are so that you can can confront these things and challenge them. And so, you know, pastors can begin thinking about this and preaching about all this other stuff. Because you'll maybe hear you don't as much anymore in a typical evangelical church, um, a sermon where he'll mention abortion, things like that, but they won't touch feminism. Yeah. Right? They won't they won't um they won't go anywhere near that because half the church would think he's a misogynist and hates women. Um, and you, you can't, you cannot do that. And, and so that all of this stuff, it's, it's, and, and just looking at, yeah, the destruction of the family, um, and, and how much we, we idolize, uh, wealth in this, in this way, not, not, not real wealth of, um, you know, intergenerational uh, wealth that's being produced and, and, and a good, uh, yeah. solid, sturdy life that, that will last for hundreds of years. But just this cheap, you know, selling off the seed corn uh, kind of uh, kind of living that that we've had, and and you, and you see it even like, um, even in, I mean, some of the stuff that like uh, drove uh, Trump's pop and still drives Trump's popularity is you have this this guy saying, hey, maybe it wasn't a good idea to move all of our factories to China. Like, yeah, it was good for. I mean, it's the same argument. Like, it was good for GDP in the short term, but even now, it's like, well, you know, World War Three is maybe on the horizon. And we couldn't fight it if we wanted to because we can't manufacture the stuff that you would need to fight a, right. a war. Yeah, we all we um, all felt that during like the post COVID, you know, yeah. all the the supply chain yeah. uh, craziness. We're like, yeah, I can get that to you in a year. Yeah, yeah. garage yeah. door is coming in six months. Yeah, yeah. we tried to order. Uh, you know, we we you know our, our family keeps growing. We needed to be the typical you know homeschool family with a twelve passenger van. Yes, we tried to order one. Yeah. Uh, brand new because the price of used ones was almost as much wow. as, as yeah. new ones because yeah. of the supply stuff. Yeah. And we go to the Ford dealer in, in town and, he's, and we're, he's like, when we order it, you know, we ordered it in like May. It's like, yeah, it should be around in Christmas. Oh, oh wow. man, that's terrible. And so like Christmas comes and we call him up. Hey, is that van in production yet? Are we going to yeah. get that thing? And he's like, yeah, maybe next Christmas. And then we're like, wow. What? Wow. Are you serious? And so, yeah, we had to, we had to buy a used one for like the price of a brand new one. And, yeah. and, it, and it's like, you, you think about that, like, why is that happening? Well, it's because there isn't actual manufacturing in the United States anymore. And, and with that, I mean, it's, it's like the, the Tucker Shapiro thing where those jobs uh, were breadwinning jobs for families, right? Yeah. Those are jobs that provided for a family. I mean, you look back 40 or 50 years ago, right? Women didn't have to go work. Their, their husband could provide right. everything they needed right. uh, from the, the job that he worked. They went because they wanted the extra you know, money and, and things like that. But uh, you, it wasn't a necessity. Now you look at, at many families throughout the country, like even like the price of a home today, um, you need to, I think like the median price, uh, it, it was on Twitter a couple of weeks ago, like the, the amount of um, income you need in a household to be able to afford the median level home in America is like $116,000. Wow. And it's like, well, like, you know, there's not very many men that make $116,000 on their own. Right. Um, and so it requires a dual income just to own a home. Uh, and, and it's like, that is not a healthy <laughs> system that doesn't work. And, right. and so, um, so some of it, like the things that, that the economics that, that drive, you know, the, the Trump thing and the, the populist economics and so forth, um, from like a libertarian perspective, you would be like, no, like it's more efficient to have the factory in China cause you could pay them less and, and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, right. well, 
I don't know, I'd rather pay maybe a dollar more for certain things um, and know that someone in my country has a job that can feed his, his family. So are you, are you arguing in the book then that you, you know, I mean, Boniface was famous, was infamous for cutting down the tree yeah. and yeah. in the middle of the There's the picture on the, on the, yeah, on yeah, the book. Yeah. See, yeah. see, there it is. Yeah. In right, the middle of right the town, they, they, worship, they worship the tree. So he went in to tell everybody that, to, to show everybody that yeah. this isn't a god, I'm going to yeah. cut down the tree. Yeah. So is that kind of what you're arguing in the book is where we need to, we need to kind of cut the roots, chop the, this, this, this yeah. economic trash, you know, yeah. society tree down yeah cut it at the roots and, and the and, and it's this this idolization of of mammon not in the sense of you know like, like toby's talking about that that no god blesses people that are faithful that work hard and and are productive and, and like that's that's part of what god does right if when you're faithful is he, uh -huh. he blesses the the labor of your hands it's it's the, the idol however is trying trying to get wealth just to consume it right away and it and it is um this this idolization where you, you care so much about money and wealth and, and we collectively do that. We will, we will sacrifice the future in order, uh, in order to get the, the wealth now. Like that's, that's the, the mammon idolatry that we have. Sure. Not, not, not that, you know, it's wrong to work hard and, and want to make money, but rather, um, it's actually good to, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, the, it's the right thing to do because yeah. you're supposed to provide for your family yeah. and think about and leave an inheritance to your grandchildren. Exactly. Um, but, but you actually have to have long-term thinking. Yeah. 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 Even, or even, even just to have kids, like right. you right. have to think that way. Right. right? And, so, so right after my question, why are you so mean? Uh, my, <laughs> my next question is, is when did you become a kinist? You should, oh, okay. you should read that okay. ad real quick. And then he's yeah. got to, uh, he's got to answer the kinism oh, okay. question. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of home, this is why Knox is not here. It's where you build your legacy, where traditions are started, seeds are planted, meals are shared and stories are told. Home is where you prepare to go out into the world. Finding the home that's perfect for your family is a big job. Story Real Estate is Moscow's top real estate team. They give people real estate advice all over the country. Family homes, investments, land, new construction, or commercial, they know real estate. If you've thought about a move to Moscow, Idaho, or anywhere in the country, maybe even Wasika, uh, reach out <laughs> to get connected with a Story Real Estate agent today. Wherever you're going, they can help guide you home. Visit storyrealestate.com. All right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when did you become a kinist? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. Well, yeah. Well, like Owen Strain thinks, you know, I am and probably you are and everyone yeah. in the room is. Uh, uh, but uh, no. Uh, Owen it, Strand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right, all right. Yeah, Toby no. was rapping just like he was. Uh, or, or, sorry, he needs uh, to go Dave back to school. He was rapping just like he was. Uh, <laughs> does, does, does Owen rap? Yeah, oh, you haven't seen the video? There's a oh, video of him. Uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, Dave is much better. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So, unpack this. Yeah. So, I mean, there is, I mean, you, you see it like, you know, um, you know, Stephen Wolf is accused of this all the time. Um, any, anyone that, uh, th thinks out loud about, you know, race and ethnicity that isn't, um, there's no race, but the human race and colorblind society and all these things, but actually addressing like, Oh, there's different groups of people. They have, you know, they have different strengths and weaknesses. You know, different nations have this, things like that. And anytime you look at that and, and talk about it that way, it's like, oh, you must be a kid. You must think interracial marriage is a sin and things like that. And it's like, no, I don't, I don't believe that at all. Right. You know, it's, right. it's more so, um, you know, I, I, I think I've, I started to have an interest in, in these questions, um, around, you know, when, especially 2020 and you know, the, you're like, which race is responsible for this? Yeah, that's right. Well, the, the mostly peaceful, you know, summer of George happens, you know, oh, starts in my state. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And you're seeing all these things and you're seeing, um, insane stuff that, uh, now, you know, the left wing people say about like Israel, uh, they're saying about whiteness, we need to eradicate whiteness, abolish whiteness. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking like, well, they're, they're talking about me. <laughs> like, this is, I don't like that. That's right. not good. And, 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 um, they're, they're viewing these things like the CRT and, and woke even before that, you know, you, you have like the, the gospel coalition, um, you know, celebration of Martin Luther King. Oh yeah. Things the MLK like 500, yeah. um, and 50. Yeah. yeah or, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 50. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 500. That was, that was, <laughs> that was the, the real reformation, reformation 500. Right. <laughs> yeah. MLK 50. That's all you got is 50. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or yeah. the, or the, uh, we, we've, we've shown the, um, what's the, the Chandler, um, clip, yeah. the Anglo uh, eight, uh, Anglo eight. Yeah. yeah oh. whatever. Uh, well, and I, I've even thought about this too. Like there are, um, there, there are guys I've, I know who, uh, 
very, um, very bright, very competent. Like they uh, would apply for med school or law school and they would not get in despite having great yeah. grades. And then someone who is, you know, not white, uh, yeah. that's a worse student than them right. would get into the school they wanted to go. And it's like, yeah. That that's doesn't make. I mean, it's the same Chandler thing. It's the Anglo eight versus the yeah, right. you know. Yes, I mean, is, but you know, so there's an example of how the church has led the way. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I know, yeah. I know, we we mutually you know reinforce our idiocy. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. but the whole um, uh, um, affirmative action type stuff, yeah. and and, mm-hmm. and some of that's been overturned recently by the Supreme Court, uh, at least in college, the Harvard college, college, college admission yeah, stuff. I mean, yeah. limited extent. Who, yeah. who knows yeah. what'll happen exactly? Because everybody's still you know busy. they'll find a workaround virtue signaling, yeah. but yeah. but. but at the same time, um, so um, we, we ought, I mean, we have, we should have no problem with um, talking about the truth, talking about yeah. the way God made the world, talking about different nations, different races, all mm-hmm. these things. Um, and, um, and wherever that, like, so that's, that's not a problem, but at the same time, like, it seems like there's also is a rash of people um, mm-hmm. maybe, you know, being mocked for, you know, whatever, because of all the hatred of yeah. um, the white race or, yeah. um hatred of Christianity or whatever mm-hmm. it is, or just being a man male, you yeah. know, cause the, oh, yeah. you know, cause the patriarchy, the patriarchy. um, yeah. there's, there's a constantly a temptation among many to just finally say, screw it. Yeah. You're right. I am. I'll be racist. Now. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. So yeah, I am yeah, racist yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and, and just sort of, um, embraces, mm-hmm. um, the, the, the label that's been given to them. Yeah. You go to the dark side by, and, yeah, by yeah. the, yeah. by these progressives. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, I'm seeing that and, mm-hmm. and while, um, I have some sympathy because I, I know yeah. like you've been beaten over the head yeah. with this yeah. all your life. Yeah. Um, I also know that this is one of the, the central things that Jesus addressed in yeah. the gospels. I mean, I mean, we have all the same players mm-hmm. that Jesus had, Yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. you have the zealots. I mean, yeah. we got zealots, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, left and right zealots yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, who would just say, all right, fine. I'm going to burn it down, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, you know, what's your approach to dealing with, I know that you know you you are reaching out to many young men. I know uh-huh. you're you're a, you're a pastor. You're thinking about these things, but I mean, how how are you thinking about this? They are you know we've got leftist crazies, yeah, but their oh, yeah. crazy is starting to incite a kind of right crazy. Well, yeah, I think so, and and that you you have a natural reaction to, um, an overreaction to yeah the, the leftism. Uh, and somebody and, punches us, we want to punch them back. Well, exactly, yeah, and, and so my my approach and this is this is similar to like the conversation i had with with doug and the guys you know yesterday uh with canon is i i see that and i i see you know examples of that where you know young men especially because um certain things many things are repressed you're not allowed to talk about them right you're not allowed like like the big one is like crime statistics right you're not allowed to to look at the racial disparity in crime statistics yeah. because Right. That's racist. And, uh, and like young guys will discover this and like, Oh, I've been lied to about all these things. And then they, then they will go, you know, further and further off black pill or whatever. Yeah. 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 And so like my, my thing is I want to be able to like, like you said, openly discuss things, not, um, like recognize that there's, there are this massive taboo about any, any of these kind of conversations, but, uh, but just be like, well, I don't care, you know, um, and right. And be able to be, be someone where I, I don't get scared off or I'm not going, if, if someone said like one of these young guys says to me, well, I think th- thus and such, or I was reading this online. Like, what do you think about that? Like, um, they won't expect me to be like, you're a racist. You need to repent. You're, you know, right. you're, this is bad. Uh, but rather be able to have a conversation and say, well, you know, here's maybe where there's a, a point here, but here's where they're wrong. You know, be able to, yeah you know, pastorally talk through issues because like you said, I think there is um, going to be a reaction. Yeah. Right. To well, I mean, the I, left and it's going to be bad. Yeah. If it's no, not, I, and if it's not Christian. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. And that, that's part of what I'm concerned about is, yeah. is that is like, I mean, it's going to turn violent. I mean, yeah. when you, if you join yeah. the revolutionary spirit, even on the hard right, mm-hmm. um, that, that turns into violence. It will. Um, yeah. I, but I'm like, you know, I, I'm seeing people like accusing Doug of being, you know, yeah. calling him boomer and you know, this yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And, and, and you're like, <laughs> you know, you know, Doug wrote, um, you know, Southern slavery yeah, as yeah. it was <laughs> I know. when, you know, you were in diapers. Yeah, yeah in exactly. The 90s. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, most of we weren't even born yet. And yeah, he's yeah. been called racist and, you know, slaver yeah. and all the rest of it. And, you know, decades. And, and homophobic yeah. and all the rest mm-hmm. of it for decades. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and I like and I'm you know I mean I know somebody who doesn't know who doesn't know, but it's just yeah. sort of like chill. Yeah, get relax. a sense of, of yourself. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you yeah. need to recognize yeah. that that you know yeah. Doug was doing this. Our community yeah. was doing this. We was, yeah. you know we have conferences yeah. here. I don't know. You were probably here when we, when some of those happened. I don't remember. Few when of them, you, yeah, I mean, yeah, th- but yeah. there was like we had protests because oh, yeah. you know so D- Doug was defending slavery, all the rest yeah. of it. Oh, he's and, a racist. And and, and, and it's like mm-hmm. no, you know, read the book. Yeah, re- read the argument. Yeah. Um, so we're um, you know, as you say, like there's a sense in which we must not care what the left thinks. Yeah, yeah, but. We do need need to care what God thinks. Exactly. And we also need to care about the people who are listening to us. The mm-hmm. left isn't listening to us, but you got a bunch of these people that are on, you know, red pill slash yeah. on the edge of being black pilled. Yeah. Listening yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think you're right. I mean, yeah. To, to speak on it. Like I, I always tell people because I'll see people like, Oh, Doug is a boomer. He doesn't get it. And, yeah. da, da, da. and I'm like, well, yeah, he is, he is of that generation <laughs> and he's by far the best <laughs> by far. Oh, like, yeah. uh, and and, uh, and, and so cut him some slack, right? <laughs> like, you know, uh, and even if you, I mean, it's like, it's like arguing with your dad, right. Um, you're going to disagree with him on things. You're going to have a different generational perspective sure. than he does. Um, but it, that's fine, but it's, right? it's the way it is. But I guess, and I guess my point though is, is like he, um, he would at least be one where you'd say like, Clearly, he's not holding his views because he's trying to get points with because the he's left. Afraid, yeah, or, yeah, be, or because yeah, he's afraid yeah. of the cancel culture of the yeah, right. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he was, yeah. you know, you know, he he was he didn't care about what Russell Moore thought before anyone, you know, like knew that he was woke. Yeah, he, like, yeah you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, I mean, yeah. that 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 kind of thing. There was a yeah. reason why he's never been invited to any of the conferences. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, then, he was canceled before there was a thing called cancel culture. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and and so I think. Yeah, I think a lot of people should cut him slack, you know, that are that are nipping at his heels uh, from the right. Um, even though, like, you can disagree and and like I, I disagree with him on things, and it's it's sure. fine, you know. Um, but I, I think but that's just it, that's just honest disagreement. That's yeah, just like yeah, I, I, yeah. Re- I read this text differently, or yeah, I, re- yeah. I read this situation differently. But that's just called being human, and that's yeah. being a man. And it's it it's gonna happen, you right. know. And 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 so yeah. But aside from that, I think I think like the younger the younger guys um, are. You know they've grown grown up in this this um, this cultural milieu, which is 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 cranked way up. Where you're a white male, you are the very low of the low, and it, and like you said, it's very easy to be filled with bitterness, yep. and resentment, and and rage over these circumstances. And um, like the antidote to that is not all right. Now I'm just going to be angry online all the time. The antidote to that is uh, work hard and do the very best that you can with what God has given you right. and, and, and build um, a, a culture, build a, a society, build a people that um, will stand when all of this is cleared out. Right. Right. That's, that's what you need to be about. And so, I mean, yeah, you could, you could talk about different things and think through them, but it often, I think it, it causes people to um, basically to cope with their circumstances where they will, um, they're like, oh, it's because of the 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 left and how they hate white people. Why my situation's so bad? Uh, when no, God has still given you a lot that you can you can work with, and so to direct that energy in, into productive things. Right. Uh, that's that's often what I I try to tell guys. Right. And 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 so I I don't know. Maybe I have um you know a level of credibility with you know young right wing guys because I'm not I'm not going to instantly point the finger at them and, and freak out over you know, something you know, that the left would, uh, that they say, uh, but it, it's, it's ultimately, there's a pastoral goal to that, right? I want, I want young men to think Christianly about all these things, right? Yeah. Okay. You know, this, you, you know, what's going on here. So how, how, how does God want you to think about it? What does the no. word say about these things? No, um, no that's, that's really good. I, I, just, I just think what you're going to have to do is, it, um, I'll, I'll stop here. You, you're trying to make me shut up. Aren't you? I, was, I, was, I was doing that. Look, yeah, I, I hear that. I, I, I guess I, I just want to say, though, I, absolutely. And, and yeah. Jesus looked at, like, you know, the zealots of the first mm-hmm. century as sheep without a shepherd. Yeah. And had, had a heart for them. Right. So we should yeah. have a heart for the red pilled and even the black pilled. Yeah. yeah. Um, want to see them shepherded well. Yeah. And at the same time, I mean, he is going to say things to offend them, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, when when your Roman overlord yeah. commands you to go with him a mile, yeah. go with him two. Go two miles. You know yeah. who he was talking mm-hmm. to? He yeah. was talking to the black pill Jews. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was he was talking to the people who were 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 pissed at yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, their right. progressive overlords. Yeah. Yeah. 
And and that wasn't Jesus saying, so be a pacifist. That yeah. wasn't Jesus saying, be apathetic. No. Um, you know, welcome to my kingdom where we're losers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah, the kingdom yeah. of Jesus at all. No. But um, but that shepherding, you know, back to maybe the beginning of, you know, the, uh, you know, why are you so mean? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I just, I guess at the same time, um, sometimes think there's an over coddling yeah. of the black pilled yeah. um, and where it's like, you know, don't punch right. Yeah. Or whatever. Well, that's, that's a whole, that's, we need another and, hour for and, that. And, yeah. and I, and I, and I want to just, yeah, we do. Um, I, um, but I, I, and I just want to say, no, let, let's punch fair. Like, like, like we, we like, and, yeah. and I think, and I think there's, um, and there's places where, um, when our team, our mm-hmm. side, I mean, I mean, as far as the world is concerned, like yeah. me and, you know, Larry Elder and Uganda yeah. and Trump, you're, you're and all evil Torba. Like yeah. we're all the same yeah. people. Yeah. We're, we're all yeah. the same people. Of course. Yeah. And, and I don't, I'm not, I'm cool with that. Like yeah, I'm yeah, totally cool yeah. with that. I'll stand there. And, but then at the same time, I want to have the freedom to be like, Hey, you shouldn't have said it like that. That was stupid. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think like the Charles Haywood, uh, no enemies on the right, uh, thing is, is, I mean, it's a prudential strategy. Obviously it's not uh, a moral one where it's like, no, you can't have any moral problem with someone to your, to your right. But a, a lot of it is, um, you can like what I, what I try to do is I plant my flag in the ground where I am and then you, you guys do the same thing and say, okay, here's where I'm at, but I'm, I'm not going to like go out of my way to attack, you know, these guys. Um, and, uh, because they're, they're constantly attacked from all sides. Mm-hmm. And, and like the second you do that, like the second you're like, no, you, this is where you're wrong. And this is where things are bad. Um, they instantly shut off right there. Then it's like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this guy. He doesn't have anything to say, anything. He's, he's my enemy, you know? And even though you're not, um, so it's a very, it's a precarious position, right? It's not, it's not a good one to be in where you, you can't, um, you know, you can't bo- punch in both directions, um, in a, in a, you know, in a positive world, but Jesus did, Well, he, he, he did and he didn't. I mean, he, he gives, you know, moral instruction to them about how to act. And, and so some of it is, um, it's like the moral instruction of like Aaron ran at the conference in, in Batavia a couple of years ago. Like he gave this list of things and one, I mean, and, and a lot of it, and he's, he's, I think, uh, very much, uh, you know, no enemies to the right kind of guy. Um, but he's still saying like, whatever you do under no circumstances, can you even use any kind of violent rhetoric or language or anything like that? And that's similar to what Jesus is saying to the zealots, right? So he's giving, it, there's, there's room to give this kind of instruction. Like this is bad. Don't do it. Um, and, um, in that way, but you're still communicating. And even Jesus was, I'm, I'm on your side. But this is a this is a bad idea. This is wrong. Don't yeah, do it. Um, right. So I think it's it's within that that paradigm that framework that yeah. you're able to do it. It's yeah. not. It's because like the punches are going to go left, right to to the enemies. But uh, it's more the it's it, it's like it, it's more like disciplining your children, right? In, in that sense, sure, right. Um, and this is where you know the, you you always have to have the pastoral wisdom of knowing yeah. sort of is is this a refugee or is this an apostle yeah. of the world? Yeah. You know, is this and is this a refugee from you yeah. know from from the black pilled world or is or is this an apostle? Yeah. I'm gonna give you last yeah. word because because we got to wrap up. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I think I think too it's it, it's also a thing where um and this is this is stuff you know I learned from you and from Doug about you know pastoral ministry is and and just fatherhood is you have to have money in the bank and able to you know take. You make a withdrawal. Yeah. Um, right and, check. And so I think with, with a lot of, a lot of the young guys, you need to have a, a, cause these are, these are big checks to write, to say, this is wrong. Don't do it. Um, and so you have to have a lot of money in the bank saying, I'm on your side, I'm on your side, I'm on your side, uh, to be able to, to do that. So, and that, that's what Jesus did with these guys. This is right. I'm, I'm on your side. I, I'm not, <laughs> I am, uh, I'm, I'm one of you, you know, I'm, and, and I, I care about you. And then he's able to say, yeah, when the, when the Roman, when someone, when someone strikes you in the face, uh, turn the other cheek, right? He's not, and, and they take, and, and initially people take that not as pacifism, but as the, the proper way to, to live, uh, same thing with the, you know, the extra mile and, and so forth. So it's, um, I think I look at it in the, in, within that kind of framework, right? A, a pastoral or a, a fatherly one, yeah. more, more so than I'm punching right and left. There Sorry. you go. Um, where can people find your book? Uh, on Amazon or BonifaceOption.com. BonifaceOption.com. Thank you for so much for coming in the studio. How can people follow you? You're on Twitter. You're on Twitter, your website. Uh, Gab. Yep. Uh, just at Boniface Option and, and YouTube, uh, Contra Mundum. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks. 
you uh, heard it here first. Andrew's a kinist and an angry man. <laughs> so I think that's the that's oh, what I, I walked away with. Yeah, that's what we're gonna get clipped out of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is if you're single, get married. If you're married, have kids. If you have kids, go baptize them. Until next week, love God. Uh, actually, yeah, next week. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. Knox still won't be back next week. What? Yeah. This is Cross Politics. Hi, I'm Luke Ritchie. Wrong timeline. Okay, that's better. Time travel mechanics can get a little bit tricky. I'm Luke Ritchie, Chief Visionary Officer of Gravity Jack. In 2009, we founded Gravity Jack and essentially patented they are. What I'm about to tell you about is a vision that was 14 years in the making, War Tribe of Vinyaman. This is a game that feels so real, it might be. It's a genre-defining game for AR and mobile and the Apple Vision Pro. We've integrated artificial intelligence, not just into the characters in the game, but actually in the business model of War Tribe. So I love augmented reality games. They're one of my favorites. Uh, but the problem is it seems like they've added AR as an afterthought into the game. What if you sat down for 14 years and planned the entire thing around augmented reality? Games make a ton of money, and typically that money doesn't end up in the pocket of the players. We intend to change that. Lastly, and this is important, half the world has never and never will be targeted by big tech for an AI natural language processing engine. We're definitely gonna change that. War Tribe of Binyamin has gameplay like you've never seen before. We have portals opening everywhere, we have holographic communication, but what's really cool too is the world of 2133 is accurately geo-overlaid on the world of today. We're laser focused on ROI for our shareholders, which is you. One of the things we're doing that's super unique that's never been done before is taking 10% of in-game revenue monthly and giving it off as a dividend. The other co-founders and myself started Gravity Jack in 2009, but in 2007 we'd actually sold our company to a gaming company. We've hired the best of the best in terms of game development. Our director of development, product designer, are all veterans in the gaming space. Uh, and not only that, we're going after a market that's gigantic. We're combining four huge major markets, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, translation, and gaming, uh, all for a combined market value of 1.85 trillion. Our incredible history has led us to be experts in mobile development, augmented reality, AI, gaming, and computer vision. It's been a wild ride here at Gravity Jack. A benefit to being so early on in augmented reality has led to a robust patent portfolio with active revenue and more to come. We've had the privilege of working with clients such as Oscar Mayer, Kraft, Lincoln, Samsung, T-Mobile. We've also worked on non-lethal Department of Defense contracts as well. We were a reference developer for Meta on the Oculus 2 directly, creating a game where other developers look to our source code for best practices. Early on in Gravity Jack's history, we did a game for Double Down Casino, and at the end of that contract, it was grossing 35 million a month. Our robust history has led us to be experts in augmented reality, AI, gaming, computer vision, and mobile development. Play to earn opportunities for the impoverished, create an AI language model for unreached people groups, allowing us to have an eventual monopoly on speaking to half the planet. Our focus is shareholder dividends immediately after the game and into the future to create a game that's gonna blow the world's minds. And we're pulling people out of poverty and into productivity. So what's the ask? Join the Binyamin. Cheap.